During my childhood, growing up in San Jose, California, I vividly remember the first time going to a Cambodian restaurant because their dishes were iconic, wrapped in beautiful banana leaves. Unlike other cultures, which have become so easily Americanized, Cambodian's food, or Khmer cuisine, still contained an element of mystery for a large part of my life until I traveled to the country itself. The legendary Khmer Empire once ruled over most of Southeast Asia, and the epic structure, now infamous after its rediscovery, Angkor Wat, was the capital of the ancient kingdom. This massive temple city baffles historians and archaeologists alike because it seems to have been suddenly abandoned and then subsequently swallowed by the surrounding jungle. To understand how Cambodian cuisine evolved, it's important to understand the history of the region. The Khmer Empire was the predecessor to what we now know as modern-day Cambodia, and it was immensely powerful, ruling over Thailand, Laos, and parts of southern Vietnam at various different times. The Khmer Empire brought Indian influence to Cambodia, which in turn was passed on to Thailand and Laos, spreading Hinduism, which was eventually supplanted by Buddhism. Though the Khmer Empire was in decline by the 14th century, their influence still lingers in Khmer cuisine. For example, the use of coconut milk and turmeric to make curries and desserts shows traces of Indian influence. In fact, one of the popular Khmer dishes is amok, made from curry mixed with coconut milk and wrapped in banana leaves. This dish demonstrates how important fish and rice are and have been to the Khmer people. In fact, rice production was the most integral component to the expansion and maintenance of the Khmer Empire. The Khmers created a hydraulic society to control the water supply from rainfall to their rice crops. They constructed dams, reservoirs, and irrigation canals around the Tonle Sap to collect water during the wet season when there was a lot of rain. Recently, satellite mapping has discovered an advanced agricultural system consisting of old canals and waterways from the berets to the rice fields. This creates a good argument for the use of the berets for growing rice. Other than rice, Cambodian food is predominantly fish. The country is covered with wetlands, and the monsoon rains, which begin in April, even allow fish to be freshly caught from the inundated vibrant green rice paddies throughout the country. Moreover, the Mekong River, which travels through the heart of the country, holds an astonishing number of freshwater fish, and the Tonle Sap Lake is believed to have more fish than any other lake in the world. Fish is the most common meat as they are abundant from the Mekong River, Basak River, and the Tonle Sap, the largest freshwater lake in Southeast Asia. Historically, from this abundance of fish, the Khmer invented a paste called prahok, which is fermented for up to three years and stored in banana leaves. Yet, prahok struggles to survive amongst locals due to the effects of global warming. The numbers of tre riel have plummeted because of the rising water temperatures. With the drop-off in the numbers of prahok fish, prices for the paste have more than tripled putting a basic commodity out of the reach of so many. Today, after its failed communism and struggle for right of land, Cambodia's economy began to take off thanks to tourism and industrial expansion. However, the growth created over night millionaires, leading to large wealth gaps and increased food prices. Today, there are nearly 2.5 million people struggling to survive on less than one US dollar a day. The future of Prahok in the diet of the Khmer people is unknown, as the true impact of global warming and rising wealth gaps is still unfolding. But the Khmer people have faced severe hardships before, and their culture has always survived. My food for thought today is this, what can you do on an individual level to have an impact on the planet? Maybe it's making better food choices or changing your light bulbs, or driving less, because everything really adds up. Considering the vast amount of carbon that's entering the atmosphere, we need to make a change now. And by realizing the power we all have to make a huge impact by voting with our dollars, companies have been making massive profits off us, but we haven't demanded the necessary change from them in return for our money. 
As consumers, we need to band together and demand more sustainable products that contain less waste, are sourced more locally, and thereby create less pollution by and large. I empower the people of the internet, no, implore you, those watching this YouTube video about food, please be conscious about the fact that the decisions you make when you buy things are essentially the ballot that casts the vote of our planet's future. We're in this together. Thank you for watching.